Mm. Now, now it's time to stop. <laughs> no, is that, is that Rin's new accent? Me. Yeah, dog, this is me now. <laughs> yeah, dog. Oh man, I thought you were. Well, I'll teach you how to Dougie. Oof. No, this is, this is our refuse. sound check now. This is just this is what life is <laughs> these days. This is what we've devolved to. <laughs> The little tagline after sound check is because of this is my life now. <laughs> this is this is why I have nightmares. <laughs> it is my honor and pleasure to be the bringer of your nightmares. Hi, yeah, no, I'm here. A little tired. I'm just Do I get a sound check? I believe you were the first one. No, I want another just one. unintentional. I want another one. <laughs> <laughs> wants to do another sound check. All right, go for it. Everyone quiet. Forge, sound check. Great. Wonderful. That works well. <laughs> He's like, oh, wait, no, I got to think of something good. No, I just, <laughs> the joke was that I just maintained silence. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's Rin for the rest of the episode. Darian doesn't know whether to thank the gods <laughs> or be terrified or pray or for harder. His life. Yeah. <laughs> there are only two options <laughs> gratitude <laughs> or <laughs> expansive fear. <laughs> Is there anything else anyone wanted to say before we start it up? I love you. <laughs> I, I mean, love you too, Forge. That's my line, so. All right. More. I, I also love the Diab. But... <laughs> <laughs> too late, Kelso. It's too no. little too late. <laughs> Sorry, middle child, but nope. Gonna kill all your children. A DM. I'll smooch you. Ooh. Ah. Yikes. It's not fair. <laughs> this level of flattery is me. not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to tell me what happened last time? Forge it. flirted with the DM. <laughs> That was this time. Oh, so that's that was time. last time, too. Excuse me, sir, every that's time. every time. That's every given day. <laughs> that's that's not exactly something that happens. It's more like an existential state at this point. <laughs> What, what did happen last time? <laughs> yeah, tell me. I'm tell, trying to I'm remember what happened. I mean, we, we did, in fact, fight a giant mech scorpion. I'm trying to mm -hmm. remember every event that led up to that. Uh, caffeine. Caffeine was involved, for sure. <laughs> uh, Rin and Caffeine are not a good match, but not for the reasons you'd expect. No, uh, in, instead of Psychopath, he uh, he turns into... Sugar crazed child, which actually is kind of par for the course, but um, turns out changelings can't, at least this changeling, really can't handle it and uh, practically teleports to and from just out of thin air and and uh, crashes really hard. The vibe I was going for with a cat with catnip. Yes, yes. that is the vibe that, that was gotten across. <laughs> It's also yep, you, though. Yep, nope, I definitely, I definitely, like, am picturing the cat with the super dilated pupils and everything. Well, to be specific, he actually said his eye was twitching, and by twitching, it was shape-shifting rapidly. <laughs> really, really <laughs> random side note. Um, it has been decided canonically in my world that tabaxi are, in fact, affected by catnip. That's right. It has. Gonna drug the fuck out of that tabaxi. <laughs> Touch her, I will kill you. I, I think that's. I think that's most of what happened, really. We leveled up. Also, you leveled that. up. Yeah. We're gonna see how that goes. Uh, so the reason you guys went to try to fight the mech scorpion. Uh, you guys, uh, after having a discussion with uh, uh, High Keeper Hamidi, Keeper. 
yeah. you went home, were approached by uh, uh, Keeper Najin, who said that she had a potential job for you guys. You guys took the job, and it was to uh, cut off the supply of a particular item that uh, the Vinzoli mob had, or no, not this Vinzoli mob, but the uh, slave traders had been expecting to assist them in their work. And if possible, you were to bring it back to Heaven's Tower, and if not, you were supposed to destroy it so that they couldn't use it either. Uh, you set a post, set an ambush, laid some explosives, uh, ended up only having to use one of them, uh, killed the guards who were uh, leading the caravan, and as you finished them off, uh, the thing that they had been carting around on the massive cart came to life with the use of magic near it and ended up attacking you. Uh, the heavily damaged Mecha Scorpion did some damage, but uh, ultimately was brought down by your team. And uh, that's where we left you off. Uh, the Mecha Scorpion lays sizzling in the hot sand in the early morning. Uh, your Kasim and uh, Zafir are both with you. Looking a little winded after the, after their heavy fight. Liberty, yeah. Liberty is approaching um, the gentleman that was thrown into the cliff on the roadside. I believe it was confirmed the last time that he is super dead. Uh, so actually, use... point of order. Uh, thank you for bringing that back up. I redid the math and wanted to retcon a little bit. He's definitely unconscious, but Liberty is realizing that the the damage to the back of his head, while severe, is not as severe as she initially thought. Uh, he may not be dead dead. All right, then. Uh, but at first is... glance, he does appear to be dead. Uh, Liberty is going to come up close, uh, just double check, um, if there are any signs of life, then spare the dying. Go ahead and give me a medicine check. Ooh, first roll of the night. Uh, modified 22. Uh, you check over him. Uh, and you end up uh, feeling a pulse. He's very unconscious, and it's probably going to be a couple hours before he comes to, but he's alive, surprisingly. It's spare the dying to make sure he doesn't bleed out. Let's begin just sort of sitting. He... I'll check and see if there's any, like, bleeding wounds or anything I can do to slow him slow down uh, any damage or help speed up his recovery with with the, the 22 you're got... you're able to make yeah. sure he's stabilized he's not going to slip away uh but as previously stated he's definitely out for the next couple hours mm -hmm. all right so she's it's going to take her uh several minutes to do that what are the boys doing while i'm doing that Looting. All right. Uh, uh, of course. Forge, roll me an investigation check. Are you going to loot the smashed up bodies down on the bottom of the cliff? That is a 17. <laughs> that is like a 300 foot drop. Uh, probably not a good idea. Uh, with a 17, though, uh, look, looking over the cart, looking over some of the bodies that were left behind in the Skeladar itself, uh, you'll probably find. Uh, all in all, you find a pack in the cart that contains 15 platinum Ooh. and 25 nice. electrum. Oh, we're using electrum? <laughs> Why are you being that guy? <laughs> I 
I'm sure we could find a merchant in town. <laughs> hey, you want to uh, Can you break a 20? <laughs> that is a, uh, so That is a dumber form of currency than firstborn. Something I have not explained to you guys yet and something that's relatively new. Nope. Uh and especially Darian will know this. Rin will probably know this as well, but Darian will definitely know this. Electrum is used to legally buy magic uh, paraphernalia of different sorts. Some magic items are for sale with regular gold pieces, but there are certain items, and especially pretty much anything that comes out of a arcane college, ends up being purchased with Electrum because Electrum has a very specific property that allows it to be tracked to the previous owner. Ugh. Okay. I love it, but also dangerous. <laughs> we found marked that? bills. Yeah, pretty pretty much. What are you asking, Forge? You, you, How much you, electrum did I get? Uh, 25. 25. Remind me, um, what is the... Um, the usual conversion rate is 5 gold to 1 electrum, I believe. I do believe that is correct. I believe it's 5 gold. 5 gold mm -hmm. is 1 electrum. Uh, thought, let me see. I thought Electrum was like close. I thought it was like between silver and copper. I think it's. I think it's in between. Is it? I, yeah, okay. I think it's actually. Yeah, electrum is between silver and gold. Hmm. In between silver and gold, so it's like it's like five silver. Is five it? silver. Yeah. Okay. It's it's a fifty cent piece. Okay. Yeah. That. Whatever. Whatever the book says is correct. Sorry. Oh, oh, it does have a conversion rate on D&D Beyond. It's yeah, I just don't have that pulled up. Equal to moment. five silver pieces. So I'm a little sorry to have done that to you, but that is the thing that is in my world that you should be aware exists. I'm giving you a hard time. I know. But I appreciate that if you're going to use it, you're at least giving it lore. And it's yeah. not just another type of currency so that the party members have to do more math when they find a treasure <laughs> hoard. Yeah, no, I, I try not to do that. There is a reason that it exists. I like it. Um, Darian, uh, due, due to all the lightning magic that has been sent back and forth, Darian's... Uh, scars on his arm are sort of leaving a like a sort of pinpricking sensation on his arm so he's, <laughs> he's kind of absent-mindedly rubbing that also uh i was thinking about that earlier today and for clarification um uh the way i visualize the scar running like from like middle finger essentially branching out and working its way up to like the shoulder like the top of the shoulder um Rather than like random splits of cracks like a lightning bolt, I'm thinking more of like a fracture, uh, not fracture, a fractal. Like, um, have you guys seen? I don't know what the fractal process is called. <laughs> I don't know what the process is called, but like, uh, essentially, like if someone like takes a wooden table and hooks a car battery to each end, how oh, those are so cool, right? So that's what I'm essentially picturing is working its way around his arm. Yeah, those are those are. Er, uh, not Erlen Meyer, Jesus. Um, Lichtenberg figures. Yeah, that sounds about right. I think that's what they're called. Um, so that's kind of how I picture it as, as more of a hybrid of the two, as far as like line work. Um, so Darian's kind of rubbing his arm because the sensation is kind of there. Um, and he's going to head over to check on Liberty and the one guy who is mm -hmm. not named yet so he's the one guy <laughs> um it, it is a dwarven individual uh i vote we call uh, him boyland thick mutton chops that bleed into a large mustache that covers the upper lip uh sandy blonde curly hair that slightly pokes out from a uh loose fitting uh bulbous cap with a feather coming out of it um He's dressed in Vinzoli garb with some leather armors, a crossbow across his back, uh, and a war hammer at his side. Liberty, okay. yeah, after stabilizing him, is like 
kind of crouched next to him and watching as the guys go about. And as soon as Darien approaches, she's watching him very warily. Okay. <laughs> I cast Animate Dead. No, come on. <laughs> <laughs> that is not why Dang it, he's not so. dead, so it wouldn't work. <laughs> He's not dead, Jeez. so it wouldn't work, and that's not... I'm He's... not dead! <laughs> I'm not dead I'm, not... I'm not that big of an asshole. Okay, now I... I need a comic or a sketch where there's someone arguing with a necromancer about whether or not you can use animate dead on them. I'm not dead yet! Yes, you are! You're just a talking skeleton. No, no, I was like this before you tried to cast your spell. No. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Turns out it was one of those awkward cases where, like, the soul or the ghost was still around, but when the necromancer animates the corpse as a zombie, the ghost uses that opportunity to repossess its body. <laughs> oh, hey, you can talk. I don't remember being able to do that with magic before. That's neat. Anyway, <laughs> um, always oh, been able to talk, you jerk. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Well, see, because now mentally Back I'm thinking the swiper desert. no swiping is what Liberty's doing. <laughs> this is a bit. This is more like you shot this guy with so much electricity. Her, um, she's standing next to him, still holding the shield in front of her, and her uh, a free hand is holding onto her holy symbol. How is he doing? He's stable for now. Oh, that's that's good. Oh, is it? So let the record show that we weren't the ones who killed him. <laughs> Nearly killed him. That that was the score. Whatever the score that thing is, that that was not us. For the record. <laughs> oh no, the scorpion. This the one that the scorpion killed got flung off the cliff. He's oh. dead. This guy is the one who is further back when this explosion happened and got blown against the wall instead of getting well, blown were... off the cliff. Oh, I see. I thought this was the guy that got There fried. were four guys? <laughs> there were three guys all in all. Two of them went one down got, the cliff. One got exploded off the cliff. One got thrown into the wall. The third one survived because he was uh, driving the cart. That's when you guys came yep. down, started fighting him, and the Skaladar was resurrected due to the use of magic around it and then stabbed through the uh, canvas the last guy who was driving and threw him off the cliff too right okay so this is one of one of the two guys that stepped on a landmine essentially. <laughs> yes, yeah it's land man <laughs> he's he's not he looking so hot right now that's odd i could have sworn he was on fire <laughs> fireball was <laughs> um well, that's awkward. Since I miss, since I was incorrect on that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna recant all of that. <laughs> mm, that's wrong. <laughs> uh, you hear the I, I would say uh, that I went and tape checked recorder the... rewinding. <laughs> rewind bit. <laughs> Charles, rewind the bit. <laughs> Please. Fine. But now we rush. I'll, I'll say that Darian did ask how he was and after that awkward conversation is probably waiting for a response so, since she's uh, in, a, in a great mood at the moment I miss five no thanks to any of you somewhere in the distance Rin rolls his eyes <laughs> Almost as hard as Liberty rolled her eyes a moment ago. To be fair, I assumed the landmines were going to be for the cart, not necessarily for them, but uh, he gets results. Yes, and you did so much to halt the violence after he set off the bombs. I mean, do you want to be impaled by the giant scorpion? Because I could probably wake it up. Oh, I'm sorry. Are my morals making you uncomfortable? Yes. <laughs> I feel like you've been holding on to that line for a while. 
I forgot in this group, whoever is inconvenient or an obstacle to your goals is merely collateral damage. Should yeah. I put the shield down to give you a free shot at my chest? Have at it. I, I need to know, is that canon commentary from Rin in the background? Uh, I, I mean, odds are probably yes. Why would it not be? <laughs> I just, I just need clarification on whether she's actively <laughs> ignoring him or I'm just ignoring Forge. <laughs> For legal reasons, she needs to know if that's a joke. <laughs> you have to tell me or it's entrapment. <laughs> <laughs> you have to tell me or it's meta. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd say Rin is actually doing that. I... God, Sala, give me there's, a, there's a slight twitch every time a Rin comment flows by, but she's locked eyes with Darien right now. I'm not going to have this argument right now. But, uh, we'll have it later. Darien's gonna just <laughs> kind of stand there without words and then looking for something somewhere else to be, he's going to go check on Zephyr. <laughs> okay. That uh, will be a conversation later. Zephyr... Distraction, Zephyr, I need something. <laughs> Zephyr has uh, entertained himself by climbing oh. all over the Skeletor and kind of poking and prodding at everything. Did, did he find the, um, the tendon to make the tail curl and uncurl? <laughs> Not yet, but he's trying. To clarify, yeah, how, how organic... Or versus to make mechanical is this? Oh, it's fully it's 100% mechanical. a robot. Okay, this, she said tendon, so I is... needed to make sure that I she knew something I didn't or something. Uh, this is what is considered yeah. a construct. There are okay. constructs that are made from things that are a bit more living material. You are aware that in... flesh golems, yes. flesh golems exist. <laughs> Flesh golems, yes, but uh, specifically in the Gwendolian Empire, a good amount of their militar militaristic force is a uh, what is referred to as a warforge, uh, which tends to, in some way, shape, or form, be made of living wood. Yes, not magic. always fully. Not always fully, there are a good amount of them that are completely made out of metal, but there are others that are also made out of animated wood. War magic is great. I love the lore on it when things like that are in play. Wizards of the Coast, if you're looking for new material for your next expansion, we are available. I'm pretty sure this is canon. When you hear this in <laughs> 10 years. I love to tell people things they're doing wrong. Hit me up. <laughs> I can confirm. <laughs> Mega oof. Uh, find anything interesting, Zephyr? I mean, the entire thing is interesting. What are you looking for? Uh, I I don't know. Uh, look in look at the tail. Is uh is there a gem or anything? I looked in at there? it first. It's completely shattered. Okay. Uh, are there any shards or anything of it you could salvage? He kind of gestures to a large spray of what looks to be glass all across the sandy road. I mean, take your pick. Fair enough. I just thought maybe something was still in there. And uh, anything else of interest? He kind of hefts the the tail, uh, the tail's point itself, and kind of gestures to the long uh, blade at the very end. I mean. I'm trying to figure out to get it off, but it seems pretty well attached. Yes, I would imagine. Why don't you come on down? We'll uh, we'll get ready to start leaving. Da. Mutter some things under his breath before sliding down slowly. I mean, there's a long trip back. You can hang on to it and look around it while we're driving it back. But we should probably pick up our stuff and get ready to leave. The longer we out, we are out here, the more likely someone else may show up. And uh, liberty. There will is... most likely be a patrol of guardsmen who do come around this area eventually. We, you are correct. We should be leaving. Yes. That was Slim JD In case anyone was wondering. Yeah, it, it took me a second, but yeah. Uh, 
we we should probably be going. Liberty is uh, probably not in the good mood to come across more people, not necessarily for her own reasoning. Darian's gonna start they, picking stuff up. Translation: The cleric <laughs> patience is wearing thin. Yeah, they don't really <laughs> respond, but do begin packing up, double checking, making sure that they haven't left anything. I'll be right uh, back. Keep behind. going. Okay. Not to that they haven't left anything behind that it would be damning. Um, as Darian's packing things up. Uh, he's talking uh, not to himself but to his bird on his shoulder now Gila you did such a wonderful job today I will be sure to give you extra treats when we get home you're she such kinda... a good enslaved spirit <laughs> <laughs> she kind of cocks her head and uh, chitters a bit uh, in recognition of your voice good girl and that that's it for me someone's at my door okay. hold on <clears throat> keep going Okay. Hi, friend. That's two people who are gone now. Oh, did Forge need to go do a thing? Yeah, Forge popped away. They keep going. Okay. Once every, I'm assuming we're loading everything up into the cart and driving the cart away. So yep. once everyone else has loaded everything up, then Liberty will pick up the dwarf and bring him. Well, she'll. Remove his weapons, stow okay. those in her pack. You disarm him. And then, yep. And then uh, put him up in the cart beside her. All Let right. Yerk drive this time, unless one of the guys really wants to drive. But Yerk knows where we're going, so. As you begin hefting the dwarf towards the cart, Yerk kind of that doesn't necessarily get in your way, but definitely gets in your vision as you move that way and says, I do not... Are we taking prisoners? Not making more corpses, and unless you'd like me to heal him and then leave him behind to tell the patrol where we went, prisoners is probably our most pragmatic option. I mean, and he looks over the corpse a couple times. I do not believe that he is about to perish. You could leave him on the road. I'm back. Welcome back. Liberty is uh, has stabilized the dwarf and is made a move to put him in the cart. Your has concerns. That's what you missed. Uh, is she holding said dwarf, or is is he on the ground right now? A little bit of both. My strength's only ten, so I'm assuming right. it's kind of a half. Rin, drag. Rin, Rin flops the dwarf into a fireman's carry and just sort of slobs him onto the wagon. Dwarves are heavy. Dude. <laughs> Do you have a plan with the with the body, Mister Mister Ghost? Yeah, fuck it. Concern. <laughs> uh, Yerk begins making sure that his mask is completely pulled over his nose, uh, that he's covered, and says, "You can do what you wish. Just leave me out of it." And he'll climb into the cart. Liberty is climbing in right next to the dwarf. All right. So you all begin loading up onto the cart, and the horses are whipped up, and you guys head back onto the road and continue going. Um, I would like someone to roll a d20 for me. Well, twelve. Okay. Yep. You begin your way on the road. Uh, the sun is fully risen behind you as you continue along the road that you traveled uh, late last night or early this morning. As you begin traveling, you eventually think you might hear shouts of concern and alarm from behind you on the road. Um, not getting louder, but it does appear that you are escapade has been noticed. Liberty quirks an eyebrow over at Darian. I reckon and say Rin left his calling card there. Uh, oh. sure. Yeah, you were you were gone during that time. I'll, I'll allow it. Good stuff. Wait, in the middle of the, the 
the area we fought in? Yep. Okay. Right in the epicenter of the blast. And yep. do, do remind me, what is Rin's calling card? <clears throat> uh, I'm going to say it's a co uh, it's just sort of a blank coin that he's scritched a little uh, grinning face into. Okay. Of course it is. <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, I, I'm picturing the Captain Tusk Tooth tattoo now. <laughs> uh, but Liberty quirks an eyebrow at Darian. Forget to bury the bodies this time. I mean, I wasn't going 300 feet down the cliff to do it. Hello? There's no response. There's no response <laughs> from oh, Liberty. Okay. Also, what were, what were we cocking our eyebrows about? Because I kind of missed what was being said when we were traveling. We heard oh. shouts in the distance and apparently um, our escapade, ah. or evidence of it has been discovered. Ah, well, yeah, okay. Um. <clears throat> well, as long as we keep moving, we should be fine. There's a okay. there's Nobody actually looks... a slight there's a slight hint of suppressed panic in his voice. Liberty are you guys... over to see are we leaving wagon tracks? I uh, you're traveling on the main road, so yes. Mm -hmm. Um even with mold you... earth I probably wouldn't be able to do very well. I mean it's a road, there's gonna be wagon tracks on it. Oh but... yeah. But if we veer, mm -hmm. sorry, I, I'm saying this without context. If we ended up veering off the path later, I'm not sure how well I could cover the tracks as we traveled. So don't. Fair enough. That was that was just my mental train of thought. <clears throat> we should, uh, I mean, as, as long as we keep going, they shouldn't be, I don't think they're faster than us, right? I mean, this has enough horses. Well, you're yes. the patrols on this road, Yerk. Uh, what, the f what is the question? I apologize. Are the patrols on the road likely to be mounted and able to catch up with us fairly quickly? If they begin searching in this direction, it is a high likelihood, yes. I, either we should speed up or in some way conceal ourselves, I would say. Najila, darling, will you go see how many there are? That all takes flight. Uh, you're looking through to Gila, I assume. Yes. I'm uh, having her fly as... kind of high, so that it's probably less obvious. I mean, this you guys are, like, right next to the ocean. There's a good amount of, like, seagulls and okay. other... And other waterfowl that are in this area. I keep forgetting how close to the ocean we are. Yeah, you guys like the ocean we right below like you. In the the plains on our way toward like halfway between there and the city. Oh no, not yet. You guys have not gotten to that point yet. Okay. Uh, you are like half a mile away from the spot. Okay. Uh, which means you're still on the cliffside roads. As Najila uh, not a takes, lot of places to veer off. As right. Najila takes flight and begins backtracking a bit, uh, it doesn't take her long, especially as the bird flies, to get back to the area where the Skaladar still lies. Uh, you do see a group, uh, a medium-sized group of armed guards that have all uh, discovered what's happened. You see a few of them have begun investigating, and quite a few of them have horses. And it does appear that they might be starting to move your way soon. Okay. Um, so how many in total is that? Uh, all in all, there are probably 14, three of whom have just now mounted and are beginning to ride in your direction. One, two, five, six. Seven, 
Um, uh, four, there's Rin, 14 of them, and they are they are going to be heading this way quickly. Rin nudges whoever's in the um, the pilots. The dri- uh, uh, n- 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 nudge. Uh, bah, 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 bah. I'm having a stroke. <laughs> um, You're going to nudge Yerk since he's the driver. Yes, I'm going to move him out of the driver's seat, and I'm going to pull a cloak out of my bag, and then I'm going to make myself look like an old person. Okay. He's about to pull some major disguiseries. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Okay. Uh, what are the rest of you doing? Um, probably looking through my spell book briefly to uh, reassess what I can and cannot do in the moment. If Wise. we are uh, I'm... approached. Intercepted. There's the word. Gotta... Uh, I tell I've all got of a you... couple of... Oh, go ahead. All of all of you get in the back. So Liberty's in the back next to the unconscious dwarf. She's going to I've got a couple of spell slots left. She's going to uh, cast this guy self to make herself appear to be a uh, young female dwarf um, with clothing of a similar style but more effeminate um, to the dwarf that she is next to. Alright. Um, Are you going for the fiancé look? Is is that what you're doing over there? Or are you just I was going thinking, for female uh, drove? Uh, <laughs> are, they, yeah. are, are they all in the back in sort of one rough area? And also is the, the scorpio, uh, uh, cool scorpion thing covered with a sheet? Or, uh, no one took behind, anything from I the believe. scorpion. So we we left the scorpion there. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a target? You guys or something? were Wait. never going to be able to to carry that thing in your cart. Cool. Is there a tarp or something in the back? Yes. Okay. Cover yourselves with the tar. Okay. I uh, I feel really um, dumb though answer... because I, I kind of assumed that it was. Like... question. <laughs> oh, you I, assumed I was... what? <laughs> I felt I feel it really dumb because cart. I assumed it that out. the uh, that we were loading up both carts and taking the scorpion back even though it was damaged so I feel really oh. dumb for making that connection <laughs> in my head <laughs> um, it, it got can I... it walked it yeah, the, the out cart got the damaged wagon as and well. it's way there too was heavy. no way you guys could have taken that cart with you can I um can I retcon a little bit uh given that new light that should have been stupid obvious uh can I say that I had tried to help Zephyr try and pry the blade out. Unfortunately, you guys were in a hurry. I'm going to actually say no to this one. Fair enough. <clears throat> with uh, with the time that you guys had taken, had you stayed longer, it's likely you would have actually run into the group of guards that was coming your way. Totally fair. Um... Okay, so all of us are getting underneath the tarp, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, for Kelso's edification, Liberty is going more for the family resemblance. Possibly okay. a like, daughter or niece or whatever. Oh, we're playing this card again. <laughs> Thought oh, better. Oh, I, it's so I good to see you. <laughs> so you're just getting under the tarp? Uh, yep. Darian? Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, Zephyr and Yark will also get under the cart. Uh, under the tarp as well. Under the cart. Um, you guys pull the tarp over, and it appears to, at first glance, just be, uh, a, uh, protection for the, uh, goods that this elderly gentleman is carrying. Uh, are are you at doing anything else, or are you guys just waiting for the guards to catch up? Um, uh, that's all I'm doing. Okay. Quick question. Mm-hmm. Uh, how is this dwarf fairly dark skinned or fair skinned? Because I don't know the definitely more fair skinned. Skin definitely tone. sunburned. Over a few that is years. Also, yeah. 
uh, Liberty's going for a uh, similar skin tone, but with more of a fresher sunburn look. Okay. If that makes sense. That makes total sense. We were Anything at the beach else? all day. Um, Dorian's uh, going to keep digging through his book. Okay. Definitely taking, like, um, weapon weapons, any of her weapons that aren't easily conceivable, and the flail snail shield, wrapping them up and kind of wedging them underneath us. Go ahead and so make that... a survival check for that. Survival check, you said? Yes. Um, while she's like... May I to... cast guidance on myself? I will allow it. Yay! Well, while she's like trying to stuff and hide things um liberty i have a bag of holding do you want me to put any of that away or do you want to make sure that stays handy can i put the shield in it yeah very yeah. wide uh DM, how far? Okay. Um, I know it would fit, but how wide does a bag of holding open? Because I keep forgetting. You, ha it, it's a two foot wide hole. Okay. Would the shield fit in the two foot wide hole? I'd say you'd be able to squeeze it in there. Okay. It's not a terribly large shield. It's just, it's like a size or two above a buckler. Okay. Large. Yeah, more this or less. This man is too knowledgeable for his own good. <laughs> would have been a 19 survival check but this is better so for Kelso's mind then you know those shields that Captain America got in uh, Endgame yes yeah that's actually closer what I was to thinking. that size not specifically but size wise that's what I was thinking yeah <clears throat> um yeah okay uh, other question. If I pull something out of a bag of holding, do I have, like, does it, what I'm looking for, does it a appear in my hand, or do I have to, like, look for something? Yeah, how does that work mechanically? Uh, so mechanically, you put your hand in the bag, think about what you want, and you pull it out. Okay. As long as it's already in the bag. Okay. Obviously. Right. Okay, wonderful. And Thank I you. do believe, if I'm not mistaken, you can turn the bag inside out and uh, just It'll have everything that's everything, inside fall out. Which is yeah, what I want to avoid. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you. Not a problem. Any other questions? Any other preparations? Um, no, but I just had an idea for a thieves' bag of holding that has is built to have a secondary bag that doesn't get sucked into the dimensional portal so that you can put some regular stuff over top of it. Like um, like one of those Packers backpacks with like a pocket on the bottom of it. Um, kind of, I yeah. will have... A false bottom bag of holding? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> false Kinda bottom of holding. <laughs> Everything goes in the trunk. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> mm. Freaking... <laughs> Um, there's also a callback to a uh, rights of the old gods in there. Yeah. Anyways, moving off. on. What's Darian doing once we put all of the stuff in the bag? Darian's going to resume his uh, prone position underneath the cart, laying okay. his stomach reading, and then uh, he snaps the book shut, and then kind of like crosses his arms and like lays like uh, his forehead on his arms and is now uh, using. Najila's perceptions. Okay. Where is Najila? Is Flying she still in the somewhere air? overhead. Okay. Uh, from your position, you can see that the horsemen have uh, drawn very close to the cart. You can actually see the cart from your position, and they're like a bend from being able to see it themselves. Uh, I would like everyone but Rin to make a stealth check. Okay. Ready. Can I use my guidance for this instead? I mean, if you didn't use your guidance for the other thing, it holds for a minute. Cool. 18. Oh, cool. 
18. Four. Four. Uh, okay. You guys sit in silence underneath the, uh, underneath the tarp in the cart. Rin, from your position, you hear echoing through the stone and sand. Echoing through the stone and sand from around you. Very quickly, three horsemen come up from behind the cart, pull up next to it and a little head and order, stop! Stop the cart! my mic was muted okay who are you to demand that I do anything would you really stop an old man on his way home the sultan's guards and they uh, the one in the front uh, gestures to a symbol that has been emblazoned upon his jerkin ah but he pulls on the reins what is it your cart needs to be searched. There was an attack on a caravan from behind. My cart needs to be searched for what? Mice? Uh, he looks at the two other horsemen, ignoring you completely. Search the cart. What are you at today? I just told you back to town. Um, which, um, which city are we from? You're from Corizo. Corizo. Uh, the two other uh, armored gentlemen dismount from their horses and begin moving towards the cart um, excellent uh, what? I cast uh, I use my illusion magic okay so if they pull the tarp back it'll look like boxes okay um, what spell did you use for that um, I believe silent image is the one that I've got readily available Okay. So you you've, you have cast or you are casting? Uh, and let's go with have cast. Okay. You did have time to have cast it, so I'll allow it. Uh, the two guards move over and one pulls up a corner of the tarp looking inside. What is your spell, DC? Oh, well, let me tell you. Actually, that's on the wrong thing. I forgot I put it on a different. You also took your character off of D&D Beyond, the yeah, campaign someone... on D&D Beyond, so I can no longer check everything. <laughs> someone was threatening to peek. You, so you, can, to you can make it private so he can't see it. And st- I, I don't know it. how to do that. I'm old. <laughs> Jesse knows how. That's all I did. <laughs> I'm the oldest one in this chat, and I know how. Uh, sit chat. Chat. 15? Is it, okay. Is it Forge the youngest, actually? <laughs> yes. I do yes, believe that is. is true. Anyways. <laughs> um, you're the middle child. One, one of the guards <laughs> pulls back the tarp and looks closely at it before stepping in and throwing the tarp off completely uh, and getting a closer look. Are you doing gonna... anything? I assume you're gonna put that tarp back on there. You don't expect. I don't know why I keep cha- my accent keeps changing. <laughs> <laughs> I assume you're going to put that tarp back on there when you're done, Sonny. Uh, one of the guards you reaches an old for- man to get out of the cart and weary his poor bones doing it again himself. Uh, one of the guard, uh, the guard who has been checking everything a bit closer, begins to reach for a box. And as he does, his hand passes through the illusion. Oh, uh, no one could high five him. <laughs> I. Hmm. Well, if he's reaching to grab something, then no. But if he's trying to touch it, then maybe. He tried to touch it, and his hand reached through it. I'll reach out and palm his can, hand. Uh, can I stick like the bottom of like the sole of my shoe where the the top of the box would have been that he t- went to touch? <laughs> That's the most solid object I have that's not a hand. What? It's lightly k- kick the bottom of his hand. Roll me <laughs> a sleight of hand check with disadvantage. Forge, if I get this, I demand it's just a little bit more respect from Rin, okay? That's that's all I ask. Hey, I need Rin is something for it. this. 
uh, sleight of hand is probably not going to be a great bonus for me right now. Puts me at a six. <laughs> a six? <Ooh>. No. <laughs> I rolled Fuck. a nine and a four. <laughs> the nine might have made well, it. He's going to grab guards. your ankle. Guess we're killing guards today. <clears throat> Please, no. What's two? What, what's fourteen more to the list to the count of what two? <laughs> Hold on. What's what's a regular guards? In, if you in, think intelligence. if you think Liberty's mad now, wait till we add fourteen to that tally. <laughs> I am not helping any of you. If you attack the guard. So this is a contested roll, and I did just roll, and I need to figure out something real quick. Guard. Oh God. Intelligence. It's a plus zero. Uh, so he rolled a five. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I this, win. this guard who is started started thinking, ah, this seems a little fishy, goes in and goes to touch <laughs> one of the boxes. Darian, you, in the briefest of moments of the stupidest ideas, Move your foot to collide with his hand where would on the <laughs> on the <laughs> box. He taps your ankle twice. It's like it's fine. It seems legit. And jumps down from the. <laughs> I'm so proud. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm just guard, gonna say that's... I'm gonna spoil his birthday gift but now for, for Jacob's birthday I'm just going to send him in a box the sole of a shoe <laughs> <laughs> with no card nothing that's all that's there <laughs> nothing that's it uh, the guard hops down from the cart and gestures a, a thumbs up to the one on the to the one on the horse keeping you from uh, continuing the, the guard nods and says has anyone else passed you on this way? Nay none except ye mm. hopefully if I do they'll be a wee bit more polite given that my tarp still isn't back on top of my cart Salim, put the man's tarp back on. Much obliged Sonny Have a good day father Mm. And he uh, turns the horse and uh, the other two mount up as well. And they continue down the road where you're heading at a full gallop. I'm so happy. <laughs> well, that was a dumb and dumber moment. <laughs> Indeed. I can't believe it's D D, man. I cannot believe that worked. That's what the D D stands for. Dumb and dumber. <laughs> dungeons, dungeons, and more dungeons. <laughs> hey, dungeons, so dungeons, and more dungeons is a fantastic seem to parody game. By some miracle, have evaded the cops. What are you all doing? Uh, I make that comment again. Keep on going. <laughs> Once they're right. shot. Having been able to take a breath of relief, you guys uh, continue along your way. A few hours later, you do end up getting passed by the same guards again as they ride the uh, opposite way back to their patrol. Um, but you are you eventually descend from the cliff's side and head into the desert as the road winds and bends uh, through the rolling hills and dunes. And eventually make it back to where you can see the city of Corizo uh, laying beside the bay. Where are you headed? Darian's house. Okay. I'm not going to try to. Well, we didn't get a hold of the object, so there's not much point in going. I thought we were dropping this off somewhere. Here. This is our cart because we couldn't rescue or couldn't snag the wagon. Yeah, that would, that and would make sense. And the <laughs> giant robot scorpion. So, yeah. This is the cart that uh, Rin really wanted to embiggen. Embiggen. <laughs> I was thinking about that earlier today. 
in Biggin. <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> You're a wizard, are you not? <laughs> Literally picture him up in Darien's face. You don't know everything? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know every spell. That's, that's the more important to clarify, isn't it? <laughs> no, that's a paladin's job. Or a cleric's job, so, I should say. So you guys continue oh. making your way to uh, Darien's place on the far side of Cortisol. It takes another hour a little over to get around the city walls and make your way uh, to the suburbs of Corizo where uh, Darien's place is. But you eventually make it up the familiar now path to the uh, to the mansion. Entering the gate, the, the dwarf is out the, cold. The house still seems quiet. The dwarf uh, probably will be stirring soon, so if you have a plan for him, you should enact it before he actually wakes up. But you guys have made it back home. Oh, that was really close, I have to say. Uh, Liberty, what are we doing with him? I plan to talk on with him, if you two can keep from murdering him for a little bit longer. You know, I don't murder everyone I see in cold blood. No, just those who you deem in your way, and now that he's seen your house, I'm sure it will be reason enough that he's a threat to your very existence or something. Who says he gets to see my house? You're at your house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but he that I'm saying that he can be blindfolded and sent away. You can cold cock him and drop him off somewhere in the city. Oh, and one more point of damage and he's been cut. It's just <laughs> bleeding out again. He's already had I... too much of the internal bleedings going on. Uh, any melee attack is considered you know a, a sleep spell. Uh, crit and is two death saving throws failed. She knows the spell sleep. <laughs> that only lasts for a minute, doesn't you it? You said cold cock him. That's very different. Yeah, Donkey punch to the back of the head. Is, is that better? <laughs> I'm not going anyway. to kill him just because he's here. Clearly, we put him back to sleep, and we can drop him off in the city somewhere. If you don't like those options, I'm sure Rin is happy to come up with alternatives. Darian's just staring Liberty waiting thinks. for a response. <laughs> yep. Larry, Liberty's thinking it over. Looks down at her current disguise, shrugs, decides to leave it up. May I have my possessions back? He's already pulling it out of the bag. Perfect. Uh, Liberty is going to bind the dwarf's hands and... Uh, uh, put together a, a basic cloth gag okay. just so we don't worry about him like waking up and immediately flailing or screaming. Go ahead and give me a sleight of hand check for how good the knots are. Okay. <laughs> DM, we're in a fairly coastal town. 19. Can I make a history check for knot types on which ones are more secure than others? <laughs> Uh, you are not a sailor, and okay, your fine. interactions with sailors have been very minimal. Fine. <laughs> you are a nerd. So, I, I would uh, know knots. <laughs> but but with a 19, that's you have a pretty good knot. Unlike Darian, you've actually spent a decent amount of time around sailors. Yo, ho, ho. Hot <laughs> man, man. Um, once we start unloading things, uh, yeah, uh, Rin is Rin carrying him the fireman style again. Sure. What did you call me? I did not call you anything. He actually meant Rin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But then, why don't you take them to the wine cellar? We can set them up against the wall there. Of course you have a wine cellar, you posh bastard. You've been in the wine cellar. Don't high road me. I high road everyone. What makes you special? Fat enough. <laughs> I appreciate your banter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, um, uh, I, I suppose my work here is done. Some of that. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you again, York. Uh, I suppose so. If you will let Keeper Nijin know that we were not able to collect it, but it has certainly been put out of commission. I will be giving her a report for certain. Uh, is there any message or anything you want me to give her? Uh. Hmm. Let's see. Not off the top. Do yourself of a mind. favor. Ask her. Ask her out to dinner. I. Uh, he kind of stutters a few times. I am. Um, uh. I am going. Goodbye. And he uh, turns on his heel and leaves. I didn't think so. You know, Rin, I'm surprised you haven't asked her out. It seems like you are... Not my type. No? Ah, anyway. Besides, well, um... I haven't. I can look like anyone. Yes, I'm surprised for someone of such uh, talents as you got yourself that you have a type, so to speak. Everyone does. Fair enough, I suppose. Um, Liberty, do you want to head down there and wait for our guest to come to his conscious self? I think Jesse might be having trouble. Liberty, are you there? I. Uh, are I you here, Jesse? Liberty was going to ask Diane if she could make use of his basement at least, so that the prisoner does not see necessarily where he is but so she has a chance to talk with him um that's what i was saying before um darren had directed rin to carry him down to the wine cellar and then uh before you left the call uh he had asked if you wanted to go wait for him to wake up that works all right so the dwarf is carried down through the storage room, down the stairs, into the wine cellar. What are you all doing? Uh, Rin. Ooh, ooh. Man, now now that his secret's out, he can really have fun with this. Oh, God's above. <laughs> um, Rin oh. is going to uh, set the dwarf in a chair, uh, tie the dwarf to the chair, uh, he's got a, uh, we, uh, remind me, we put a hood on him, right? Uh, I believe you guys at least blindfolded him, yeah. Marvelous. That, it was at least discussed, so I assumed that it happened. Something like uh, that, yeah. Okay. Uh, I leave the hood on, and then Rin pulls up a stool across the room. All right. Uh, who all's down in the wine cellar with Rin? If anyone. I am not. I think Liberty was going down there. I'm not sure if she's still able to hear me. Uh, I'll, I'll save my shape changing until Hobbit's back. Okay. 